Our guest today is the general superintendent of the Chicago Park District. He has served in that position for over four years. Prior to being named general superintendent, our guest today served for 20 years in a variety of managerial positions within city government. He is a graduate of Loyola University and a resident of the Andersonville neighborhood. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the City Club of Chicago, Tim Mitchell. Tim? Thank you, Jay. Good afternoon. I'm so pleased to be here today. The history of Chicago's parks dates back to the early 1800s. In fact, the earliest city park, Dearborn Park, was located on the land now occupied by the Chicago Cultural Center. And that was developed in 1839, laying the groundwork for what would be one of the largest, most impressive park systems in the nation. Over the years, the Chicago parks have developed a history of welcoming the world to Chicago. In 1893, we hosted the World's Columbian Exposition in what now is Jackson Park. And then in 1933 through 34, we hosted the Second World's Fair, a century of progress at Burnham Park. Even then, Burnham, Olmsted, and other pioneering planners understood and believed in the importance of parks and open space to the quality of life. That understanding and belief are as significant today as they were nearly 100 years ago. As the general superintendent and CEO of the parks, I carry the responsibility and great privilege of ensuring that each of the 77 communities across this great city is equipped with recreational facilities that enhance the quality of life for our residents. To achieve this goal, the Chicago Park District's efforts are guided by four core values. They are open, active, green, and connected. Open. Accessibility is crucial in a city where more than 600,000 people identify themselves as having some form of disability. We must work to eliminate architectural barriers that restrict public participation in our parks. Our greatest challenges have been fitting or retrofitting historic parks with ramps, pool lifts, elevators, or other forms of assistance. To help facilitate this movement, we have allocated $6 million annually, and at our last board meeting announced a capital bill of $35 million to support capital projects that will improve accessibility for our parks and people with special needs. In addition, all of our new field houses, all of our new 25 playgrounds that we're constructing this year, our pools and other facilities are all designed to meet and exceed the standards outlined by the American with Pe Peoples with Disabilities Act. Active. Physical activity through recreation is a cornerstone of the Chicago Park District. Now more than ever with obesity, particularly among our children, at an all-time high, to help combat this epidemic, we must continue to build facilities and develop programs to encourage our children to adopt healthy lifestyles. To date, we've completed more than 50 elite fitness facilities in parks across the city and renovated over 200 miles of walking, running, and biking trails across the lakefront and in neighborhood parks. Green. Although Chicago is a booming metropolis, we are very fortunate to have a park system that reflects the city's natural environment. Chicago's parks boast more than 7,500 acres of green space, 250,000 trees, 26 miles of beachfront. As stewards of these very treasured resources, we have implemented programs that celebrate our environment and responsible practices to preserve our parks for future generations. Among our most recent initiatives are the design and installation of solar panel thermals for, to heat the swimming pools and other park facilities. We are retrofitting our service truck fleet to decrease carbon release by 
In the past five years, the Chicago Park District has replaced 80% of its light duty vehicles with more environmentally efficient models, including 36 hybrid vehicles, 50 dual flex vehicles, and 200 additional cars that are the most fuel efficient in their class. Last year, the Chicago Park District successfully spearheaded a campaign to save Lake Michigan from the potential threat of toxic refining dumping. More than 75,000 signatures were collected at our beaches to do a petition drive and then presented to the Indiana State Legislature to prevent BP Amico from dumping additional chemicals into our lake. Connected. We continue to weather the difficult financial climate. The cost of our capital and programming needs far exceed our budget. In fact, on my desk is a list of needs, wants, desires from communities all over the city. That list adds up to $2 billion. Considering that our capital program is about $30 million in any given year, you can see that certainly that list far exceeds the amount of money we have to do it. But despite these challenges, we must move forward in investing in our parks. Government support has always been a key part in park development. However, some government partners have been more successful than others. A host of city council aldermen, Alderman Fioretti is here today, have allocated millions of dollars in their menu money to support their local parks. In addition to local elected officials, we've also been very fortunate to have partners made up with advisory councils, corporations, and organizations that understand the importance of parks and have committed their support in moving our park system forward. And I'd like to highlight a few of them here today. The first one I want to mention was an out-of-town group that came to our budget hearing about four years ago. And I have several budget hearings throughout the city. Usually, there are a bunch of people from a community saying what their park needs and how much the park district should give that neighborhood park to support their efforts. But this one young lady stood up and said, I have a way to make you money. I said, that's very unusual. Please see me right after this meeting. <laughs> well, it turned out um, that this young lady is one of the managers of a company called C3 out of Austin, Texas. And in Austin, they have this little music festival in Austin. And they wanted to bring it here to Chicago. So I met with them that night and then several months of meetings afterwards until four years ago we did the first Lollapalooza in Grand Park. With our partnership with Parkways Foundation, which is our 501c3 for the Chicago Park District and C3, this partnership has brought in $1.2 million every year from that concert in, Lala, in, in Grand Park. And we provide uh, capital improvements with that. So the first year, we built a new playground in Columbus Park, accessible playground. With the second year funds, we built a playground in Washington Park. And then last year's funds are going toward an artificial soccer field in McKinley Park. But it's a way of showing the downtown neighbors and the people in the communities that downtown parks do benefit neighborhood parks. And that's been a great partnership. And this is the fourth year, and Lollapalooza tickets are on sale. So if any of your children are interested. Now, back to my regular text. Uh, Parkways is the, uh, another group that we are you know, so glad we're a part of, and they're a part of our family. Since 1994, Parkways Foundation and the Chicago Park District's philanthropic arm has impacted neighborhood parks by raising private funds for capital projects and programs that enrich the lives of children throughout our city. Their numerous projects include restoring and improving Humboldt and Independence Park, and the Children's Garden at Garfield Park Conservatory. Parkways has always managed the investments of Lollapalooza, which has, been, which has benefited the Park District in other ways besides the ones I've just mentioned. They help support Summer Day Camp Scholarship Fund, Community Gardening Initiative, and funding a new Haas Park Playground, as well as the Eli uh, Dance Camp, and much more. And recently, just last week, we, we got a new partner, Abbott, who is helping us do fitness wellness centers throughout the city, the first one up at Broadway. So we welcome, we always welcome new business partners, and we, I want to thank Abbott for joining us. The Chicago Cubs. When the Thillens family announced the historic uh, Little League field, Thillen Stadium was going to close after 67 years. The Chicago Park District was moved to step in and save that West Rogers Park gem. Immediately, Alderman Bernie Stone called me up and said, Tim, we have to do something even though I reminded him that Thillen Stadium actually sits in Lincolnwood. Um, but we did a long, if, if someone from the Illinois uh, uh, district is here, we did a long-term lease with the Metropolitan Sanitary District. 
And uh, with the commitment of Bernie Stone's $1.5 million from his menu and the contribution of $500,000 from the Chicago Cubs, we were able to raise $2 million of outside dollars for the $3 million renovation project. As a result, Dillon Stadium reopened in June of 2005 for its 68th season to continue its legendary support of Little League for our great city. Since their partnership, the Cubs and the Park District in 1991 have also funded wheelchair accessible softball fields at California Park and contributed more than $3 million to support Chicago Park District's inner city Little League baseball, which attracts more than 600 players every year, ages 9 to 15. We also, in fairness of, of distribution, want to thank the Chicago White Sox, who uh, last year donated uh, one and a half, two years ago, donated one and a half million dollars for the uh, development of a four uh, baseball field complex out of Mount Greenwood. One of them being ADA accessible, one being a high school uh, field for the Ag School that's there. So we really appreciate the contribution that both Major League Baseball teams have made to the Chicago Park District. Kraft Foods, thanks to Kraft Foods, parents and children look forward to fun summer activities to the Kraft Kids Mobile. These brightly decorated vans tour selected parks twice a week for two hour visits during the summer. The Kraft Kids Mobile bring organized cultural activities in the arts, nature and fitness to play lots and parks throughout this city. Commonwealth Edison has been a sponsor of the Chicago Park District's green initiatives for many years. ComEd has contributed over one and a half million dollars to support a wide range of community-based and family-focused nature and science educational programs and helped us to restore several Chicago nature areas, including the Jen Jensen Prairie River in Humble Park. In addition, Commonwealth Edison realizes that educating and fostering a, uh, appreciation of our natural landscape is particularly important for city youth. ComEd has sponsored programs including the Nature Oasis program, which offers opportunity for outdoor exploration, canoe trips, nature walks, and overnight camping in the parks. They've also supported our Junior Earth Team, an environmental apprenticeship program for teens, and our art outdoor classroom, which encourages teachers to utilize the parks and nature areas to teach environment to their students. Each of these accomplishments would not have been possible without the involvement and contribution of corporate partners. And while most individuals praise the Chicago Park District effort to create, to creatively seek funding for park projects rather than overburden taxpayers or allow our parks to deteriorate, a small but vocal a few question our methods without offering viable alternatives. One of those is the Spire, which sits right next to DuSable Park. The construction of DuSable Park, which was announced in 1983 by Mayor Harold Washington, has been a long-awaited project. Like many others, it's been stalled due to insufficient funding. As a result of an agreement that the Chicago Park District worked with the City of Chicago and the developer, developer of the new Spire project, we were able to realize a project that has been stalled for 25 years. With the agreement, the Chicago Park District will allow and is allowing the developer to use the undeveloped park as storage and staging for the development of the spire, at which time the developer will then remediate the project build the park out for a cost of about $9 million of his money, and then we will have finally a park that was announced by Harold Washington in 1983. It is these types of innovative and collaborations that has helped us build our city and keep Chicago moving, even when government funds cannot support our growth. Chicago is a step closer to realizing the incredible opportunity of hosting the 2016 Olympics. With a large percentage of these events slated to be held in parks, Washington Park will host the opening events, aquatics in Douglas Park, archery in Grant Park, tennis at Lincoln Park, field hockey in Jackson Park, several events at Northerly Island, rowing in Monroe Harbor, soccer at Soldiers Field. All of these are important that we move forward. The, the Olympics will mean hundreds of millions of dollars of improvement for Chicago parks, and they're important to us. So are projects that are going to happen before 2016, like the Children's Museum. This is an example that I'd like to discuss as a final example of the Chicago's Children's Museum in Grant Park. This project has sparked much dialogue and debate. I must admit that I've found that the media's representation of this project 
to be unbalanced at best and have been disappointed by the residents who are against the completion of this project. Grant Park is not a neighborhood park. It belongs to the entire city. I'd like just to take a few moments to show a video that outlines why the Chicago Park District supports a new $15 million field house and why the new Chicago Children's Museum in Grant Park is so important to the Park District and our city. Parks and programs accessible for all to enjoy. Recreation and fitness opportunities that result in good health and well-being. Acting as stewards of our precious environment. And fostering partnerships and alliances that promote our parks. These are the core values of the Chicago Park District. I'm General Superintendent and CEO Tim Mitchell, and welcome to Chicago at Play. For over 25 years, the Chicago Children's Museum has served kids and families from all over Chicagoland providing a unique environment for growth, learning, and fun. But after all those years of service to the community, the museum is outgrowing its current location on Navy Pier. Navy Pier, again, is full of some challenges. It has um, very little outdoor space, outdoor green space, and I think a new location was very important that it had that, as well as a central location, something that's a little easier to get to, um, both via car, but more importantly, public transportation, and perhaps most importantly, pedestrian. To be able to walk there, I think, is a great benefit for any location uh, for the ch new Chicago Children's Museum. So it really is time for Chicago Children's Museum to take its place with the other cultural institutions to have a, a permanent home where we can continue to create extraordinary ex learning experiences for families. Downtown is the place for us to do that. The leading site for a new museum is about a mile from Navy Pier and mostly below ground at the north end of Grant Park. The proposed site is currently occupied by the Daily Bicentennial Park Fieldhouse and a small portion of the parking garage under Grant Park. Supporters of the new museum site believe it's not only ideal for the Children's Museum, but also that it will greatly benefit the Chicago Park District and save the taxpayers millions of dollars. It's a great location because of Grant Park, what's in that part of the city. It's got Millennium Park, it's got the Art Institute of Chicago, but I think most importantly it's, it's an expanded children's museum, a, a museum that is connected to the park space and to the open space of the city of Chicago. The Children's Museum project includes replacing the obsolete field house at Daly Bicentennial Park with a new state-of-the-art field house also below ground and adjacent to the proposed museum. A 20,000 square foot field house would be built that would include um, a variety of amenities and a full-size gym, which I know that has been a, a, something that that community needs. The current facility really looks like a bunker. It's not very inviting. With the new design, it's gonna have much more light in it, much more uh, open feeling, and so I really am impressed by the work that the architects have done to make this a state-of-the-art facility. And one of the synergies of the project will be 5,000 square feet of shared space between the new Daily Bicentennial Fieldhouse and the Chicago Children's Museum. This 5,000 square feet is uh, an area that can be used during the day uh, by the museum, and then after hours, it, it seamlessly folds into the field house. Since a lot of their, a lot of the visitors to both share the same um, expectations and experiences, even um, that space is going to be a very flexible, open space that is shared between the two. Supporters of the project also point to the fact that the East Monroe Garage is about to undergo a major renovation. So launching the Joint Children's Museum Park District project concurrent with the parking garage project will maximize construction efficiency and save millions of dollars. 
That entire park is going to have to be ripped up to rebuild East Monroe Garage. So it's a unique opportunity to redesign how the garage functions, to redesign how the park functions, to redesign the field house so it functions and serves the citizens of Chicago. We must seize the moment and we must do this facility and museum now when the timing is right. Other advantages of the Grant Park site include plenty of underground parking and convenient access to Grant Park via walkways, public transportation, and existing road infrastructure, especially tri-level Randolph Street. Randolph Street, unlike 99% of the streets in Chicago, can uniquely serve this opportunity because it's on three levels. At Randolph Street, you have Upper Randolph, Middle Randolph, and Lower Randolph. I saw that as a unique advantage to at the museum to create deliveries, truck deliveries at lower, the lowest level for their buses to come in at Middle Randolph and for very little traffic to come in at Upper Randolph. Perhaps the most important and most debated aspect of the project has to do with its impact on Grant Park itself. Legitimate concern has been voiced by citizens and some groups fearful of development encroaching on Grant Park. But with this project, the opposite is true. There will be almost no above ground development and no parkland will be lost. The building is under Grant Park. The beauty of the design is that it actually blends the park and the museum together into a sort of a, a whole. It allows the museum to exist without taking any of the park space. It is incredibly light filled and dynamic and I think that's where Perhaps some of the misunderstanding has come that they think we're building on Grant Park. We're actually building under Grant Park, but at the same time, tremendously light-filled and dynamic. And the project also promises to enhance the beauty and aesthetics of Chicago's renowned front yard. So when you actually walk into Grant Park off the Randolph sidewalk, you won't even realize that there's a structure underneath you. You could be standing to the west, you'll be standing on our gymnasium ceiling, and to the east, you'll be standing on the museum ceiling. But it'll all be a green roof, thus it will not block people's views. It will seem from Randolph Street as Grant Park is open, free, and clear. And built into the gentle slope of Grant Park's north end will be another crown jewel of Chicago's lakefront, a magnificent children's museum for all of Chicagoland's kids and families to enjoy. This is something we need as an educational resource, as a family resource, and um, Chicago's a world-class city on so many levels. A world-class children's museum only adds to that picture. Thank you. Um, so, we really must continue to invest in our parks. Even as we wait for more than $30 million of state funding to be released, parks are more than just a place to play. They are truly community anchors that lend to our quality of life and the overall health of our city. They are places where neighbors meet to discuss issues that impact their community, and residents engage in active forms of recreation that develop new interests and skills. The presence of open space makes a positive contribution to the environment by providing habitat for native plantings and wildlife. Parks are also the setting for many cultural activities and give identity to the neighborhoods and add character to our city. Chicago is a world-class city and parks are an essential thread in its fabric. This is not by mishap. This is a result of an understanding and belief and the value of park systems that meet the needs and interests of its, the people that it serves, and the visions of planners, both past and present, that are committed to making decisions that will benefit Chicago for generations to come. Thank you so much. I'm not going to read because I already got handed two phony questions. Uh, one question I'm going to ask right away because he asked before all the Children's Museum's questions uh, come up. Grant Litsky wanted to know when is the park at Sangamon and Adam going to start and finish? Good question. 
uh, we were working with our friends at the Department of Planning uh, to use TIF money uh, out of a TIF to develop it. We were working on that right now. So that park should be starting early next spring, and the completion date is sometime by the end of next year. Glenn Mazzotti, I hope I said his name right. Can you comment on the continued support of the museums in the park? How much annually? How long has CPD been supporting? What are the challenges to continued support? If you want, oh wait, another side. Uh, uh, what has the Charter One Pavilion meant to the park district? Well, certainly that's why um, the Children's Museum is not as far of a fetched idea for someone like myself who understands and appreciates the long tradition that the Chicago Park District has had in having museums in the park. I understand from letters to the editor that a lot of people don't understand it. But let me tell you, my colleagues both nationally, from the national park system and internationally, and the international park system are jealous at the fact that the park district of the city of Chicago from, the, from its genesis has grabbed all those museums and collected them within the green space, whether it be the Field Museum, the Art Institute, the Museum of Science and Industry, the DuSable Museum, the Museum of Mexican Fine Art, the Peggy Notabart Museum, and the Lincoln Park Zoo, and the Shedd Aquarium, and the Planetarium. All of those are institutions that we absolutely embrace, and we embrace the Children's Museum because we see it as a part of our historic tradition as a park. Um, we contribute right now about $34 million a year to the museums and to the zoo. Um, it, is, it is something that is challenging to us to do, but we also feel that it's something very important for us to do. Uh, again, it's a part of our tradition at the Chicago Park District. Our day camps and other programs utilize those museums. Uh, the issue has come up on the Children's Museum about they charge a certain fee. Let me just assure you, all of our museums charge a certain fee. And in fact, the Children's Museum fee would sit at the current level in the middle of all of our museums. But all of the museums that are in the Chicago parks also allow free days every week. And for our programs, the children that go from day camp go on free no matter what day of the week it is. So that's what the deal we have with the museums are for the $35 million that we provide to them on a regular basis. Certainly is it's challenging, but there are, there are partners. So it's something that we're committed to working with them on and trying to get our friends in Springfield and other places to bring more money to bear. But again, they're strong partners to us programmatically, and so we will continue to support them. As far as Charter One Pavilion, uh, Chicago and the Dewey Brothers were out there uh, Friday night. Um, it was a sold out audience. Uh, it's been a great uh, compliment to that area. Uh, I go out there, I, I know I've seen Carol Brown out at our, a few of our concerts, uh, and I go out there, uh, most concerts in direct traffic. Um, so, but it's a, it's, a, it's a great perspective because 99.9% .9 of the people going to the concert go, wow, we didn't know this even existed. And I say, wow, you don't have a private jet. So, um, that is, So that is a benefit that Northern Island brings that uh, the airport didn't, so. Before we get to the next question, I just noticed that State Representative Ken Duncan is here, and we didn't recognize him earlier. And since I hang out in his ward a lot, I, didn't, I don't want to be spotted there that uh, we didn't recognize him. Then a question from Kathy Posner, City Club board member. You said that the Monroe parking renovation is going on, once you want it to go on now. But since the Children's Museum probably wouldn't start building for years because of all the lawsuits, are you going to go ahead with the Monroe Park renovation? When the uh, Park District in the city uh, two years ago decided to privatize Millennium Park Garage, Grant Park North, South, and East Monroe Garage, so the Park District had three garages and a deal in the city, had the Millennium Park Garage deal in the city. Three years ago, I was talking with the Children's Museum. I mean, these, this, has been, this conversation has been happening with the Park District for three years now. Um, so when we carved out that parking garage deal, 400 spaces in the garage, East Monroe, were carved out. So the $573 million that we got for the 99-year lease of those four garages contemplated that the vendor would have 400 spots less in the East Monroe garage 
than is currently existing today. We also encourage the uh, vendor to rebuild within five years. That was sort of an artificial timeline that we and the city put on it because we didn't want it to go too long. Certainly, there is, um, for as far as structural deficiencies, there's more than five years, but we did put five in the agreement. So it's something that we, the city, and, and Morgan Stanley and I and the Children's Museum will work to collaborate. But I don't want to rip up a park twice. I don't want to rip up a park to build a parking structure and then do the, the, do the museum. It just also makes sense for the designs to be in consort because perhaps there's a entrance to a garage in one place now, but it would make more sense to go somewhere else as we're doing this. But again, this was contemplating the agreement. The, the bidder, the highest bidder, understood what we were trying to do. Um, so we will try to make sure, because it only makes the most sense to move forward with both the museum and the parking structure being done together. So that's what we're trying, that's our ultimate goal. Uh, Joyce O'Keefe, who's the deputy director of Open Lands, I think that says Open Lands. As I said, people had to write real neatly and they didn't write perfectly neatly. How does the park district envision protecting its lakefront parks from the potentially negative impact of using the lakefront part, uh, park system as a, a venue for so many of the Olympic events? That's part one and then there's a part two, so I'll give you the part one now. How are you gonna protect the lakefront? Um, well, it's, this question is very similar raised to the park district when both the Columbian Exposition and the World's Fair was to be brought. And what ultimately happened for our history is that we got a Jackson Park developed out of the World's Fair, or the Columbian Exposition, and a Bunro, uh, Burnham Harbor developed out of the, the World's Fair. So I think that the Chicago Park District has seen a positive history in our parks being used for these world-class events, these events that invite the world to Chicago. And again, I have looked at the venues. A lot of the venues are going to be added to because of the Olympics. So we feel, we feel very strongly that it's a positive thing for Chicago to get these uh, Olympic venues in our parks. That pretty much answered part two, which was what would the park district like to achieve through the Olympics in terms of permanent uh, improvements? If you want to add any more, you've said great stuff about improvements. Well, I mean, you know, so many of the improvements are just going to be improvements that would cost us money if the Olympics weren't coming, like curbs, gutters, streets, sidewalks. And you know, we have some larger parks like Douglas Park, Jackson Park, Washington Park. Just to do the streets in, in a park like that could cost us five to six million dollars. And our budget's 30, so that's one fifth of our budget going to do a street. And 90% of the people, probably not, except for Tommy Burns, 99% of the people going to the park would say, well, what do we get? You fix the street. No, we want a new swimming pool or we want you know, a skate park because they don't see that as a recreational opportunity. Either do I, but it's a necessary part of, of what we do. So even if the Olympics gave us new lighting, new curbs, new gutters, they're gonna do more than that. I mean, we're gonna get a new track and field stadium, we're gonna get some aquatics facilities, but it's those other benefits that the park district is going to realize for the Olympics that will save us millions of dollars uh, from having to invest in those parks where I could take our $30 million and invest in other neighborhood parks that may not be so directly impacted by the Olympics. Does anyone else have any questions? Because the only other questions I had didn't have names on them. Does anyone want to rewrite their question <laughs> and put their name on it? Well, I'll allow one of them because it's, it's, it has nothing to do with the Children's Museum. So <laughs> the other ones are, you know, they don't have their name on it, we're not going to do it. This one says, I live near Independence Park. Last year, storms destroyed trees in the park. What can I or corporations in Chicago do to replant trees in parks? We have a green deed program. So if you'd like to uh, donate a tree in honor of a loved one or in, in the name of your company or corporations, we certainly do encourage it. And uh, certainly planting trees in the park is a wonderful thing. And unfortunately, the past couple years, and, and maybe this is a global warming thing, but some of those windstorms that come through our parks literally knock out hundreds of trees. And, you know, especially along the lakefront, though Independence Park is a little further off the lake, but, but especially in like South Shore, uh, Jackson Park, Washington Park, not so much in Lincoln Park, but the, the sand level in, in those parks are so high because again, it was, it was the lake until it was infilled, uh, that when those storms go down that midway, it just 
causes causes 40 foot trees just to topple over so their root systems are actually sticking out. I mean, they don't snap, they just topple. So certainly we would encourage and we would love to have uh, both large companies and either small companies supporting. Uh, I'd love to see the Tribune and sometimes, uh, you know, with all the trees they kill to try, write their papers. <laughs> love to see them. Then I'll just do one more Kathy question, because that was so interesting what you were just talking about. Could you tell us how we could go out and get a tree? Like maybe City Club would like to support a tree, and it would be the City Club tree. Would we have to water it every week? Oh. Like, like the trees in Israel, it's Tuesday, it's your day to water? No. Though that is a very creative, that's the collaboration I'm talking yeah. about. That would save us a little bit. No, certainly you could call uh, the Chicago Park District at 742-PLAY. Uh, someone will get back to you with uh, the paperwork necessary, and we work with you on you know, do you care what park it's in? Or if you just want to, you know, say, I donate a tree to the park district. Or, you know, my mother grew up near Sherman Park, and I'd love to plant a tree in honor of my mother, so will you do it? So we will take whatever uh, whatever type of tree you want and whatever location you want, except for we're putting the Children's Museum, uh, to plant a tree. I want my own tree. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call on it. Well, we have no more questions. Don't go away yet because we have parting gifts. Oh, wait, we have a question coming up. You have to send it up. Oh, oh I, I couldn't. I, I, I did heard you hear it. what it was? I heard okay. it. Carol yeah. Brown is asking yeah. Yeah. if we have any intentions of expanding movies in the park. Uh, when I got to the Chicago Park District four years ago, uh, the Park District was doing about 100 movies in the park a uh, summer. This year we're doing 260 some uh, movies in the park. We would love to expand it. Um, again, we have corporate sponsorship of some movies. We also have advisory councils. We also have state reps and state centers and aldermen who have sponsored movies because it's a great resource for a community. It gets communities out together with different families that may live on different blocks and therefore they don't know each other, but all of a sudden they're sitting on a blanket right next to them. So we really love community. They make parks safer. They make parks cleaner. They make parks more supported by a community. So the value of, besides seeing, you know, Mickey Mouse or the Giant or whatever on the screen, it brings a lot of added value to the system. And if I could do 2,000 movies, if I could do a movie in the park every night, I would do a movie in the park at night. But they really are important to us, and we really do look to expand them. Well, thank you very much. Wait, we have parting gifts. The official City Club mug. Thank you. The one year membership into City Club. Thank you. And the Centennial History Book, one year of City Club. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming today. We have a City Club lunch tomorrow. We hope you, we see you all there. Good afternoon. <laughs>